Ente Scambi Coloniali Internazionali, simply called by its acronym, ESCI, was a very well-known Italian scale model kit manufacturer based in Milan, Italy. They began in 1967 and ceased operations in 1993, but the ESCI name continued to be used until 2000. A rough translation of it means the Colonial Trade Exchange, but to understand this company we need to go back to 1937 and visit Fascist Italy. Moses Agiman was an Italian merchant of Libyan descent, and originally his company was an importer and exporter of goods between Italy and the African colonies, a reasonably ordinary enterprise at the time. But the introduction of racial laws by fascist Italy during World War II forced him to move his family across Italy's northern border to Switzerland until the war's end. Given Italy's poor economic condition after the war, anyone bringing business opportunities back to Italy were welcomed, and upon returning to Italy, Moses resumed his business activities and was even able to expand them. With the economic boom of the 1960s, opportunities grew, and in the mid-1960s, Moses entered the scale model market. He began with the very first imports of plastic model kits from Japan to Italy. The business expanded, and by the end of the decade, Moses' son, Daniel Adjaman, would succeed his father and bring in two new partners, Dino Coppola and Franco Baldrighi. The acronym, ESCI, was changed into the company's actual name, and Esci Modellistica was born. Milan was now a model distributing city. Esci was essentially just a sales office. Although it was able to make contacts and cultivate global expansion of the business, it relied fully on third-party companies to commission the craftsmen, make the molds, and even produce and package Esci models. This allowed Esci to carry a diverse range of kits because they simply contracted from the talented manufacturers like Italieri, the predecessor to Italeri, and Japan's Otaki, as well as using local talent. A side effect of this was a certain degree of inconsistency in their product, as each kit maker had their own way of doing things. So one company might make a kit that had recessed panel lines, and another company might make a kit that had raised panel lines. In 1972, Eshi provided their own additional decal sheets, which allowed modelers to finish the kits in different liveries. This was new for Eshi. Each decal sheet was packaged in its own plastic bag with a detailed instruction sheet containing up to eight different profile colors, and a third sheet with a detailed explanation and history of each of the insignia. Eshi had turned model building into a history lesson, and modelers were impressed. As a result, these products achieved considerable commercial success. Eshi invested these new resources in a series of one ninth scale motorcycle kits. The first plastic production kit was a BMW R75 with a sidecar, followed by a Harley Davidson and then a Zundop. These molds were handcrafted by the famous creator and master modeler Manuel Olive Sanz. These were followed by a Kettenkrad and a Kubelwagen. At this time, Eschi entered into a partnership with a Tallery for production of new molds, but there was a stipulation. Neither company could advertise the collaboration on the boxes as they were still formal rivals in the kit market. I'm not sure if they were trying to hide it from the customers or the stockholders. The relationship between Eschi and Atelieri evolved into a friendship of sorts at least for a while, anyway. The kit model industry was in a time of growth, so the company decided to start a new armor series using the new and, for the time, slightly unusual 1 to 70 second scale. This was normally an aircraft scale and contrasted with 1 to 76 scale in armored fighting vehicles. It proved to be a good idea, as the dimensional consistency with the aircraft scale made their armor scale a very popular choice. Combined with a high level of quality, this allowed Eshi to become one of the leading manufacturers in the kit market. Sales success led to the production of new molds, and in 1977, Eshi launched a successful line of modern aircraft in 1 to 48 scale. This was followed by another successful series of aircraft in 1 to 72nd scale. 
Between 1977 and 1983, the production of molds increased further, and the company began the common industry practice of reboxing the same kit with minor variant changes and new box art. Together with models of aircraft, armored vehicles, motorcycles, trains, trucks, and figures, they were becoming a powerhouse in the kit model industry. The careful choice of subjects was part of the commercial success of the company. A good example of this was the 1 to 48 scale Panavia Tornado. It was made in 1975 when the real aircraft was still undergoing its initial flight tests. The kit lacked detail, but was the only 148 scale model of this plane for over 15 years. As a result, it became the company's best seller. In 1984, Eshi introduced separate track links for armored fighting vehicle model kits. In the same year, they also started an innovative product, 1 to 12 scale cockpits of aircraft such as the F-104 and the F-16. I had the one for the F-16 that a friend built for me. It was impressive. In the mid-1980s, the first signs of a faltering market sent the modeling industry in a new direction. The proliferation of electronic games was stealing the attention and dollars of young men and older boys. The customer dynamic was shifting, so the model companies responded by making better kits. They used the new CAD CAM technologies to make ever more impressive and detailed kits. The combination of financial pressures and the cost of maintaining a rather impressive catalog of kits that Eshi had developed led to the entrance of a new partner that would keep the company going. In 1987, the three partners gave a majority stake in the company to Ertl, who was already the American distributor of Eshi. The result was not surprisingly the downsizing of the products list. By 1991, two-thirds of the kits were out of production. Eshi had gone from 290 offerings to just 100, and 75 of those were in 1 to 70 second scale. At the end of 1991, CEO Dino Coppola left the company, taking with him some employees that started a new die-cast model company, CDC Collector Armor Limited. In 1993, Eshi Ertl was finally liquidated. The molds were scattered about the world, everywhere from Central America to modern-day conflict zones, many of the molds to be lost to history. Ertl did keep some of the better molds, and in fact decided to release the best products under the AMT logo, leaving the Eshi logo to be put on products of, shall we say, somewhat lower quality that were intended for a larger distribution. But then Ertl eventually moved its production to Tijuana, Mexico, and later to China where it became characterized by the use of very soft plastic that degraded the quality of AMT and Eshi reissue kits. In 2000, the final Eshi molds were taken by Italeri, the former Italieri, which today is once again selling the best of the old production under the Italeri name. It seems that the Eshi banner is gone forever. Or is it? Have you built an Eshi kit? What did you think? I'm Max. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Well, if you're not a fan of my music, now would be the time to turn down the volume. The weirdness will begin in 3, 2, 1, go! Tristemente si parte Non so quando tornerò Anche se una ragione non c'è Io non sbaglierò Più tempo sto lontano da te Più sento che puoi perderti Ma solo tu sai quanto lotto senza rendermi Inseguendoti Sono arrivato senza sole Senza fiato dentro al cuore Ho lasciato un messaggio per te Però non mi dire di no Sono arrivato senza sole Senza fiato dentro al cuore Ho portato un messaggio per te Però non mi dire di no
attraverso gli oceani del nord che mi parlano di te ho deciso di rischiare lo so senza ormai un perché visto quanto hai già sofferto e pianto penso che mi capirai ti prometto che se sogni dentro gli occhi miei ti innamorerai sono arrivato senza sole senza fiato dentro al cuore ho lasciato un messaggio per te però non mi dire di no sono arrivato senza sole senza fiato dentro al cuore ho portato un messaggio per te però Targami, estate 2013, inseguici.